let me show you on this video how you're going to connect your Google Forms to Discord. So follow me to my desktop right now. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is George and this is Newt Magazine. I'm going to show you how to connect Google Forms to Discord. Now, this can be a really useful integration when you want to back up messages or let other users know in Discord that a form has been submitted. So you can give it different use cases, but I think it's a really useful feature. Now to do this, we're going to get started with our Google Forms dashboard. Now, if you don't know how to get here, open up any Google service and click on the options button, scroll down here, and you're going to find this purple icon that says forms. Select it and you're gonna, it's going to take you here. Now for this, we're going to create a blank form. You can use a form you have already, but in this case, we're going to use a blank form, okay? Now let's add two responses here. I'm going to add option one and option two. Just keep it really simple. Let's say question two and question one, okay? We have two questions here. Now the next thing you need to do is add this add-on, which is Document Studio. To do that, we're going to go into the options by clicking on the options button, get add-ons, and in add-ons, we're going to search for Document Studio. Go ahead and search it, and it's going to be this one right here, Document Studio. Go ahead and select it. We're going to install it. We're going to continue. We're going to allow access. Again, continue. We're going to allow. There we go. Let's click on done. And we have now installed Document Studio, okay? Now to find Document Studio, once you went through the setup process, we're gonna find it here on this little gear icon right here. Well, puzzle icon, actually. We're gonna click on add-ons, and here it is, Document Studio. Go ahead and select it, and we are going to open this up, okay? Let's give it a few seconds for it to open. There we go, it's now loading. Here we go, we're now going to click on empty workflow. Let's name our workflow, I'm gonna say, a discord okay and we want to send the source worksheet which is this one form response let's go ahead and continue and we have the option for conditions you can send process all form responses that means that all form responses are going to be sent out or specific form responses now when you select specific form responses it enters it in conditional logic mode okay so for example only continue if for example the email address um contains you can say for example gmail Right. So it's a great, great way to send out specific form submissions. In this case, we're going to send all of them. OK, let's go ahead and continue. Let's select Discord and Discord. We're going to need the webhook URL from the server that we want to use to send the notifications. OK, so let's jump over to Discord and Discord. We have several connected communities here. In this case, I'm going to select my test community, which is this one. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go into server settings. We're going to scroll down here where it says integrations. Go ahead and click on it. We're going to click on webhooks. We're going to create a new webhook. Here we go. We're going to open this up and we're going to copy the webhook URL. Now be aware that you want to designate where you want to send these messages to inside of that community. For example, name your bot and then the channel. In this case, I'm going to send it over to the general one. If you have more channels there, you can send it to the specific one if you like. Okay, so let's copy this webhook. Let's go back into Google Forms and add it here. And then we have the message body. In the message body, we can have the variables that we have on our form available here. For example, new message from, and we are going to select the email. Okay, new message from, and we're going to select the email. And then we're going to say response one equals to the answer from question one. And then we're going to say response two, and this is just giving you an idea of how this works. Okay. Question two, and then we can add something else. For example, like the timestamp, for example, and you got more variables here, depending if you have more uh, elements in the Google form, we're going to be able to use the variables here. Okay. Now let's click done. Here we go. Let's go ahead and continue. You can run on form submit, which is always a great idea run workflow every hour and that means it's going to trigger it every hour maybe you're going to get all the messages every hour instead of every single time that it's submitted skip hidden or filter rows which is always a good idea and add a time delay if you don't want to get these really frequently in case they start filling up filling these out in bulk okay let's go ahead and save the workflow save and run there we go it's now saved it's connecting to google sheets so it's making that integration there we go. It's now integrated and you have several actions here. You can edit this action in case you want to change 
the webhook URL. You can run it now. You can duplicate it. You can export it and you can delete it. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this out. So let's send it out. Let's copy this link. Let's go into incognito mode and fill out this form once. Okay. So I'm just going to say test at test.com answer. The only answer that we have available. Let's send it out. Here we go. And we need to give it a few seconds for it to send it over to Discord as a message. Okay. Let's head on over to our channel. Okay. Here's the channel. And here we go. We got the response. So here we go. A new message from the test email response option one response two is option one again. So as we designated that we're able to receive the response. Now, the idea is to use this to send out messages to Discord because you want to let your team members know maybe you're using Google Forms to receive responses for a survey. Maybe it's a ticketing system where you want to have a backup or continue it over there on Discord. So it's always a great option to do so. Remember, if you need to switch it up, go ahead into Document Studio. You can go ahead and edit it, change the webhook, change the Discord community that you want to use. Maybe it's you add a new channel and you want to change it up. Just go ahead and change it here on Document Studio. Okay. So it's a really easy way to connect Google Forms to Discord using that add on. Okay. Now, if you want a more simpler solution with more advanced features, there's also the job form option. So if you want to use job form, you can also connect to Discord. So let me show you how that is possible. Okay. So first of all, let's go ahead and create a quick form. Let's start one from scratch, classic form, and we're going to add two basic elements to this just to make it really simple. Full name and the email, right? There we go. It's now ready. In this case, we're going to preview the form because we're going to fill it out once. This way we have data to use for the connection with Discord. Okay. Now it's created. Now let's go into settings, integrations, and in integrations, we are going to search for Discord. Go ahead and select it. And in this case, there are several Zapier templates. That means that there's more advanced options that you can use here to connect to Discord. For example, if you want to send a message every time that a form submission is created, use this app. If you want to create a post every new job form submission, select this one. If you want to create a message, a direct message to Discord for new submissions and job forms, select this one. And there's several of these available. I'm going to use this one. So it's going to send out a message to Discord every time the job form is submitted. For this, we're going to use Zapier as the bridge. Be aware that you need to create a Zapier account. Now, in this case, I'm already connected to Zapier. If it hasn't connected previously, it's going to ask you to allow it access for job form to connect to Zapier. Okay. Now we're going to connect our job form account. Choose account. I'm going to connect a new account. Now, in this case, it's going to ask us if our job form account is IPA compliant. If it is, select yes. If not, keep it in no. And if your database is in European, then go ahead and select yes. If not, keep it at no. Let's go ahead and continue. We're going to allow. There we go. It's now connecting. Let's go ahead and continue. We're going to select the form that we want to connect with Discord. In this case, this is the form that we've just created right now. So it's this one. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's test the trigger. Here we go. We got the response right here from the test that we've ran. Be aware that if you don't submit a form first, it's not going to have data here. So submit it first with test data. So we have data right here. So let's continue. There we go. Now let's continue with the Discord connection. So in this case, we're going to connect to Discord and we want to send a message. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's sign into Discord. All right, so we're going to allow it. We're going to use the test server. Select the server that you want to send this to. In this case, it's my test server. Let's go ahead and continue and we're going to give it access. Let's go ahead and authorize. Are we human? Yes. There we go. It's now connected. Let's go ahead and continue. And here we go. The channel, we're going to send it to our general channel. If you have several channels available, you're going to view them here. Okay. Now what we want to do is connect the values. So the ping the username, do we want to ping a username? In this case, no. Select the channel. And if you have more channels, they're going to appear right there. Okay. Now for the message we have connected here automatically, it already created, for example, the message that it's going to create and it has all the data here. You can clean this, you can beautify it, you can remove elements that you don't need. For example, if you don't need notes, go ahead and remove it. If you don't need status, et cetera, you can go ahead and remove that or keep it or just modify it. All right. Now we have other options like, for example, we can text to speech. We have more options available like ping username. If you want to mention someone, so it pings them. 
You got the text to speech option, so you can enable that if you like. There's also the bot name. In this case, we're going to name this bot, right? You got your bot icon. If you want to select it here, just add an image URL. And if we're good to go, we're going to continue. Let's test the step. Here we go. Let's go into Discord. Here we go. We just got the message. You can see it's bot. We didn't add an image. So it's at Zapier and we have the message right here. Now that's super easy, right? So once you're good to go, go ahead and publish it because if you don't enable this, it's not going to send over those messages to Discord. And that's how easy it is to connect job form to Discord also with more advanced features. So I definitely recommend that you check both of these out and decide at the end of the day which one you like the most. Now, please let us know here in the comments what you think about the integration with Google Forms and Discord. And if you would like to see more videos on this topic, let us know here in the comments. Don't forget to share, like, and hit that little bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And that's a wrap.